I like this song. Okay. We can listen to it. That's fine. Say hi! Hello! <laughs> Watch the road! Hey guys and welcome to this vlog. This vlog is going to be a two, potentially three day event, if you will. I'm gonna to try to consolidate in as much information as possible for you guys. But today is Thursday, the 26th of April, and it is two days before the MPC Kentucky Derby. I have my client, Sabrina, coming in from, she came in from Maryland last night, and I brought over her big care package, which was the car full of microwave skillet, two coolers, some emergency foods, and all kinds of utensils and stuff and everything for her to have a successful couple days here as we peak her for her first competition. She's gonna step on stage as a bikini competitor for the NPC Derby. I'm so excited for her. I'm just gonna intro this vlog here with my appreciation for her as a client and for her as an athlete as a whole. Like, I can't speak enough about this process for her. She's never competed before, so this is the first time. She came to me after doing the Katie Hearn challenge and she did phenomenal with the challenge. She dropped a lot of body fat and uh, she was very, very confident in her ability to track macros. She was very confident in her ability to train hard in the gym. She just learned some really good fundamentals from that program and I really can't speak enough about that program because of how she came to me um, with such a high level of knowledge coming into this. So she was ready to tackle competing right off the gate. However, I told her that I thought that because she'd come off a fat loss phase and the amount of size and muscle tissue wasn't quite there ready to be a full on like shapely bikini competitor I suggested us do an improvement season and see how much calories we could get up how much size we could put on her and shape we could build and kind of go from there and she continuously gave herself enough introspection with the process and set herself up to where financially she could afford to go through with a full prep and step on stage how she wanted to. She knew that the finances were a big part of the equation and she was always very intelligent about this process and she had a long off season so she could save up money but also she could continuously improve her body. Guys, like I will put side by side of her progress because I'm sure she's gonna be okay with this because I know she's just as proud as I am of what she's done herself so she started off getting up her calories getting up her food we increased her weight to this photo here and this was our starting point of prep and we started prep easily um, like very light prep prior to the holidays hitting so we could kind of set her up to be in a good spot for the holidays and then once the holidays came around we didn't have to keep pushing honestly we didn't have to really push a whole lot because she did exactly what she was supposed to do and her body just responded really really well and she's had a pretty smooth prep even though she has a crazy busy schedule and she has to wake up early early in the morning to take care of everything she needs to take care of but homegirl's in bed by like 7 30 8 o'clock and I can't speak enough about how efficient her sleep has been and how committed she's been to her sleep and her recovery she's trained smart she's ate well and she's done everything she needed to do and I just cannot wait to see how this plays out for her on stage on Saturday and you guys are gonna get to see it in the coming clips we are gonna go train this is her last workout before the stage so we're just doing some light movement uh, for arms and glutes to try to get some of the nutrients that we are pushing with her carb load into those tissue fibers and so this is just really gonna be a light fun workout for her and I just want to bring some fun and you guys get to watch us train together and he's gonna film for us because he's nice and I don't necessarily have to do all of this myself today which is great and if you guys go hyper up on her Instagram she would love that you guys will see this the show will be over so go hyper up tell her congratulations because she did it I'll see you guys in the coming clips bye bye
It's one of my all-time favorite songs. <laughs> it is a good one. <laughs> shoulders.
11.15 on Friday night. I just finished up with, of course. What? Do you want to be held? Video. You want to come over here? Mr. Needy is taken care of. Today is athlete check-in day for Sabrina and it was our second loading day. We loaded yesterday on, basically I did a small load for her yesterday based on a previous refeed that we had done in her prep so it worked out perfect and we knew we wanted to go a little bit more today um, as the day progressed. <laughs> Uh, homegirl wasn't keeping much food on her, which is good, but we also needed to just go a little bit more aggressive with the load. Tonight she got to enjoy, but so Friday for an athlete typically includes your athlete check-in. So she just rested all day, she didn't train, and she went to athlete check-in. They showed her, you know, you have to wear your bottoms to this particular athlete check-in because they want to check the bottoms to make sure they are uh, regulation size. And then we went back up to the room, she got her tan on, and we were able to see a couple of her new posing that she did. She's been p doing posing with Jen Ronzini. She's done a phenomenal work. Um, I will link her information in the description box if you are a competitor and looking for some posing coaching. She does great virtual Skype sessions and Sabrina's been uh, nothing but enthusiastic about um, her work with Jen. So I 100% would recommend her to anybody who's interested. I will probably be using her in the future for myself as well. Tomorrow, athlete meetings at 9 a.m. I'm gonna try to get to the hotel to see how she looks around 8 a.m. and assess after meal one, we've already kind of picked out what her meal one's going to be and picked out her like water and coffee routine for the morning. So she's all set for that. So she knows exactly what to do when she wakes up. She is gonna step on stage tomorrow, hopefully sometime between maybe 11.30, 12.30 is my assumption with bikini coming after bodybuilding. I will see you guys tomorrow for the final show. And Louie's not going, even though he wants to. Hi. So we're gonna go to bed, because I've gotta wake up early, and I will see you guys tomorrow. It's so good. Good morning! Good morning! So we're here at her first show! <laughs> It's finally here and she needs to get backstage. I just checked her posing routine. We just took some photos in this beautiful light and they looked great except for the back photos because the weird light, but we're fixing it. All right, so you guys are gonna see her next up on stage and I will see you guys after she's done. <laughs> here of my peak week journey with my client Sabrina. It was awesome, she did so good. Her posing was awesome, she was stellar. Like, she was so similar to me. She reminded me so much of myself as a competitor because for some reason I just like am kind of awkward in my posing in like person or in like practicing by myself at a gym. I'm just so much more awkward. Um, I don't know why. I don't feel that it's as a, it's a very competitive environment when I do that. So therefore it's like the light doesn't turn on in my head or like my Sasha Fierce doesn't come out. Our Sasha Fierce comes out. Like when that sparkly bikini goes on and your competition is beside you, like it just comes on. Like it's just on. Like. You can't turn it off. I don't know what happens. I kind of almost black out and I'm just like, I gotta work. I gotta put in on stage what I've put in on 
my physique for the past 25 weeks and it's like on. And that's so funny because we had this like same conversation between pre-judging and finals when she first got off of her first show ever and just that adrenaline rush that you have from that first show. It's like this thing you're never gonna have again and I can't explain like how cool it is to see like an athlete experience that and absorb it in the way in which like I can relate to. Like some people are gonna love their first competition and some people are not going to love it. And that's perfectly fine. It's, it's for some people and not for others. Like I'm not trying to impose on loving competition. I love it and she did too. To wrap up things, Sabrina won third in True Novice. Third in True Novice was actually the largest category that she competed in because True Novice is for people who are doing their first show ever. So that's an indicator of the Kentucky uh, Derby, the NPC Kentucky Derby, had some of the most first time competitors I've ever seen on a stage. Like there was, I think, 25 women in the True Novice and basically she was having to compete against any and all high classes. And then it was Novice. So Novice requires you to never have won a show or won your class as far as I'm aware. You could do Novice and still have competed prior to. True Novice, no competition before, first timers. And then you have your open class. Your open class includes everybody at every age and just in different variations of height. So this particular show and most shows with the NPC now are A through G or H or shoot, I think I've seen I, I can't remember, but they're all based on height. So you're gonna go out in your class specific to your height and her class was class F. She is rather tall. True novice, third place, novice, fourth place. And novice was divided into height class, but it was not as many heights, her, not as many divisions of height classes. And then open class, she got third as well. So she's just a little bit shy of a national qualifying route. We would like to get her nationally qualified if possible, because I know she's gonna have a really productive off season and really do exactly what she needs to do to maintain uh, the shape that we've currently built and grow from there and take her improvements that the judges are gonna give her because judges will give you feedback. You just have to inquire them. They're not gonna reach out to you. You have to take in the initiative there. I'm gonna showcase a little bit about what we did for her refeeds and peak week. So peak week strategies, what I used was her refeeds from her prep. We would refeed incrementally and each refeed I would try to see if it would be the kind of a mock loading option for her, her pre-show load. Basically her carbohydrate load and her fat load to increase in her muscle triglycerides and also muscle glycogen. We also need to manage her fiber intake. So we also need to manage her vegetable intake. What we would do on these refeeds is we would, throughout her prep, implement refeeds. And my best, best decision for her would be to give me previous photos morning before and after so I could assess how much water she would retain or how much spillover she would retain from the increased calories and increased food that we would give her. We would also bring down proteins to allow for proper digestion during this time. Sometimes proteins can slow down the digestion absorption rate of your fats and triglycer or your gl triglycerides and your glycogen. So I would just bring it down slightly. Definitely not anything uh, too drastic but just a little bit to open up some space for also the trace proteins that are in carbohydrates and some fats like almond butter and such. Peak week was pretty easy for her. Like we pretty much, I pretty much knew some targets that we would hit and I wanted to try and experiment with those targets. And again, this is my first time prepping her as a coach. And rather than going with any sort of like Hail Marys or just some random weird things that people say you have to do during peak week, like I peaked for the, I peaked towards the athlete, meaning I did what I felt was best and what I knew would be conservative for the athlete. Conservative meaning it is her first show. We do not want her to spill over on her very first show. We want her to come in as sharp as we can get her, but I also wasn't sure of pushing her beyond any of the refeeds because I wasn't sure of digestion rate and absorption and I wasn't sure of you know, her digestion feedback, meaning I want her to continue to stay regular. I don't want her to get blocked up because being blocked up on contest day is terrible or being blocked up on the day before. That also is an indicator that you're not, your body is not absorbing and like cycling through waste like it needs to and absorb the nutrients from your peak week process, your loading process. So I erred on a more conservative route and we then concluded after her performance that she is going to compete in six weeks. She wants to do it again. My post-show 
process with her was more strategic. Did really, really well about not eating food backstage, um, post-show, celebratory food. You know, there's just like smorgasbord of girls with all kinds of stuff, like, and guys really, it's not just girls, but you know, there's the Oreo trading, there's the cookies, there's the donuts, there's the brownies being made, passed around, just random food passed around. It's just a smorgasbord. She was awesome and she withheld from that knowing that she has a, another goal in mind. And then we, chugged a bunch of water. We got a bunch of water at the table. I allowed her one alcoholic drink at night. We did a burger and fries and she allowed herself one dessert. So it was just this one time feeding. Nothing's too strong, nothing too over the top in my opinion. Kept feeding to a specific time frame, and we didn't extend it over the course of from the time she stepped off stage at like eight o'clock or some people start before they even go on finals and I'm just not quite for those kind of people who just think it's all said and done and they don't want to look their best when they accept their trophy. But anyways, that's just my thing. But anyways, a really conservative approach to her evening meal. And now that I've assessed her feedback, meaning she wasn't super upset with how her stomach felt or looked the following day and she did not feel any sort of negative digestive feedback, following her post-show meal. Like the post-show meal is throwing in a lot of food that you haven't been eating in a long time. And there can be some negative repercussions for that. So again, I told her to err on foods that she assumed would be a good treat for her, but also that she would probably digest and process well because they were foods that she has eaten on a regular basis prior to contest prep. Nothing unusual for her. The amount of food she could put down was pretty substantial. Uh, she took her time, she ate slow, that was another thing. And again, the water prior to the alcoholic drink was very, very important. That was the first thing that we did post-show after the stage was I was like, all right, start drinking water while you're getting ready. Um, we also did not cut water. We cut water down based on her not training, but we never had to decrease water to a large extent at all. We also did not have to decrease any sort of condiments or salt that she wanted to use as well. So I was also very, very happy that that was the protocol that we could place. Um, I'm very happy that I was able to show her that this is how things can be done, is how I like to run things. Again, peak towards the athletes, but looking their best and peak towards you know, getting them as sharp as possible. After assessing her post-show food, um, she's been kind enough to let me show you guys these photos here that you are gonna see right here. Um, her look is actually sharper. Post the calories and post the al alcohol and dessert, I understand are not ideal situations that you would peak an athlete for. But I want to share my learning experience with the tube and potential other coaches that are watching this. But Essentially, I was not aggressive enough in her peak to get her sharp enough. I was erring on a more conservative pace because again, I had not peaked this athlete prior to. It was a new peaking situation and I did not want to overextend her or spill her over in the very first show I peaked her. So now I know that we can push the envelope a little bit more in terms of food and calories and water as well because like, we were a little conservative on water simply because she chose she didn't work out friday and she didn't work out saturday however we had intervals of water going in at all times throughout both of those days it wasn't ever restricted from her we just know that we need to do a little bit more she can actually take on a little bit more she can actually take on a little bit more calories and receive no poor digestive feedback but it was really knowledgeable for me to go through that whole process with her because now i feel that when we peak her in six weeks, like we're gonna nail it. Like that's pretty cool experience. I hope I get that nailed down for her because again, it's all on me, it's all on my shoulders. And I think that when you get a second chance to peak an athlete, and that's why if you choose to do a show and you really love this sport and you wanna continue and you're working with a coach, I would 100% recommend if you placed pretty well um, and you have that opportunity to get sharper and fine tune those details, really, really, you know, maybe pick another show about four to six weeks out so you can allow your body to recover and rest post-show, but you can also plan get a plan of attack to possibly fine tune the details of a peak week. So this wraps up my video here. I hope you guys enjoyed this peak week with my athlete. It was awesome, I had such a great time, and I hope that I can answer any questions that you have in the comment section below, I'd be happy to. I also thank Sabrina for being a wonderful client and for being open and letting me share all of this on my YouTube channel. She's a bomb, I love her. And she did so well, and as a coach, I am so freaking proud 
I cannot tell you guys enough how proud I am of this person because she took 45 total weeks. 25 of those weeks were focused on a solid reverse diet um, to actually put tissue on and she was able to put a tremendous amount of size on her body in the best way possible in the parts of her body that she needed them the most to be competitive on that stage. She did it. She was set up to prep properly and she did all that herself. She just listened to what I said and executed it perfectly. Thank you guys so much for watching this. Please subscribe to my channel if you like this sort of content. Please give me a thumbs up. Be sure to hit that notification bell to know when I upload a video and I'm thankful for having you guys here and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.